Welcome to a presentation on border area development. The series is part of a comprehensive assessment of cross-border value chains between Sarabac and West Kalimantan. The study supports development of the West Borneo Economic Corridor in the Brunei, Indonesia, Malaysia, Philippines, East ASEAN Growth Area, or BM Piaga. We hope that you'll enjoy this overview of the project. The wood products industry is a $50 million export industry in Sarawak and over a $100 million industry in West Kalimantan. For West Kalimantan, that amount represents over 13% of the province's total exports. But for Sarawak, the amount is only 1.5% of the state's total exports. Nonetheless, the government of Malaysia has designated wood products and furniture making in particular as a strategic growth industry. Both territories produce similar products. In Sarawak, over 80% of wood product exports are in the form of sheets for veneer plywood. There are similar, albeit smaller, exports of fiberboard, plywood, and wood packing cases. West Kalimantan's wood products are mainly in the form of plywood, which account for 90% of all wood product exports. Other significant exports are wood planks, wood in chips or particles for fuel, and charcoal wood. Exports of West Kalimantan are mainly directed to Japan, South Korea, China, and Taiwan. In contrast, Sarawak's wood products are mainly shipped to Australia, with most of the others directed to the Philippines. Wood processors in Sarawak and West Kalimantan need to ensure that their logs have global certifications. Certified logs are valued by as much as 77% more than non-certified logs. Additionally, wood certification adds a 100% premium on the price of timber. More importantly, certification is required by the leading markets of wood products. There are two principal certification systems. First, the Program for the Endorsement of Forest Certification, or PEFC, is the world's largest forest certification system. Its 35 worldwide independent national forest certification systems represent more than 300 million hectares of certified forests. Second, the Forest Stewardship Council, or FSC, is a global forest certification system established for forest and forest products. There are three types of FSC labels, 100%, mixed or recycled. Export markets like Japan, Australia and South Korea have strict compliance requirements for foreign made wood products. Japan, for example, introduced legislation in 2017 called the Clean Wood Act that follows the growing trend of implementing measures to prevent imports of illegal timber. In Australia, imports must comply with the 2014 Illegal Logging Prohibition Act. The single fastest growing market for wood products is the furniture industry, whose global trade in 2017 reached 35 trillion US dollars. While breakout data are unavailable for modular furniture components, country-specific data for the world's largest importers of wood furniture point to the fast-rising market share of modular furniture imports in the overall industry. The global furniture market is complex, highly competitive, and rapidly evolving. Because wood processing is highly labor-intensive, Production has been shifting from Western Europe and North America to Asia, and in particular, China, Indonesia, Malaysia, Vietnam, and the Philippines, all of which have a comparative advantage in the production of labor-intensive products because of low wages and high-skilled labor. 
In fact, Indonesia and Malaysia are the fastest growing producers in addition to China. Significant clusters of foreign-owned companies have resulted in a large diffusion of technological innovation. Swedish company IKEA is a prime example of outsourcing with over 13,000 suppliers located in 55 countries and the number of suppliers in Asia growing exponentially. Much of modular furniture in the global market is made of wood composite, such as particle board with a decorative cover made of veneer. As a result, factory operations for modular furniture consist mainly of production operatives and assemblers. Sarawak and West Kalimantan already have the necessary upstream supplies needed to produce that modular furniture. The main challenge in the modular furniture industry, and therefore the motivation for cross-border collaboration between Sarawak and West Kalimantan, is the high fixed cost of setting up plants, along with what is often challenging or fluid arrangements with parent companies. Companies therefore need to develop scale economies to ensure full machine utilization and very short lead time between orders and the delivery to customers like IKEA. Also, vocational training for this industry in Sarawak and West Kalimantan will need to shift from artisan skills to machinery and equipment training as well as assembly operations and management skills. There are nine steps involved in the manufacture of modular or knockdown furniture. The first step is forced cultivation and harvesting. Raw logs need to be sourced from legal and sustainable forest concessions. In Sarawak and West Kalimantan, it means compliance with wood sustainability certification under the central governments. In Indonesia, there are several national policies, while in Malaysia, compliance is with the Malaysian Sustainable Forest Management Regulation. Internationally, both must comply with regulations under the International Tropical Timber Organization, or ITTO. The second step in the process is transportation to mill and storage. Logs are transported from the forest concession to the mills to be processed and are then stored in yards that use various methods to retain the moisture in the logs. The third step is debarking and cutting of logs. Before the logs are cut and peeled, the bark must be removed. Mills use industrial machines to debark logs as they continue along the production line. The debarked logs are then cut to size based on production needs at the time of cutting. Logs are peeled using a rotary lathe which peels the log in a manner like that of a pencil sharpener, except that the blade is completely parallel to the log at the time of the cutting. The fourth step is shipping to manufacturers. After arrival to the furniture manufacturers, the logs are checked and measured to ensure correct sizes and that the moisture content is within the required standards needed for production of the particular furniture products. The fifth step is cutting and molding. Each piece of timber is carefully cross-cut into required lengths. Cut timber is then bundled on pellets, which is then processed at the molding section to achieve the shape and size required. Sixth is component fabrication. Molded timber is processed by different machines depending on its shape and design to acquire its features. These components are then carefully sanded to round out all shape edges and smooth out all surfaces. Next is assembly. Each component is put together to form the part of the intended furniture. Joints are glued together to form a strong bond and the assembled parts are then stacked together and labeled for traceability. The eighth step is finishing and packing. Assembled parts are dipped into teak oil and wiped dry to achieve the brown or teak finishing. Teak oil acts as a repellent of wood destroying insects, fungicide, as well as providing some weather and ultraviolet resistance to the wood. The parts are left for a time for the teak oil to cure and dry and are then inspected again before packing into carton boxes. 
The final step is delivery. Finished products are loaded into containers according to customers' orders. Containers are shipped out to customers, usually under mass production contracts with major companies like IKEA. Both Sarawak and West Kalimantan have well-established downstream activities in plywood, veneer panels, and blockboard. These products form the basis for making modular furniture components. In both Sarawak and West Kalimantan, many of these company owners have expressed a strong interest in diversifying and expanding their activities into high-value component furniture parts. To achieve this objective in what is a high fixed cost setting with fluid arrangements with parent companies, Sarawak and West Kalimantan would do well to collaborate in inter-industry trade with the component furniture industry. Not only would it provide greater sourcing of sustainable wood products that need national and international requirements for each territory, but it would also offer opportunities to gain scale economies that lower costs expand access to technological know-how, and result in greater international competitiveness for both sides. The opportunity is made all the more possible now that border trade between the two territories is being reopened. For details about the resumption of border trade, see our video on Sarawak West Kalimantan border crossings in this channel. Don't forget to subscribe to this channel to keep up to date with industry-specific projects on cross-border value chains. If you enjoyed this video, give us a thumbs up.